Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the only live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media, BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guests are from Behind the Book, an organization working to inspire students in our city. Joining us with more information, we have Joe Umas. We're going to say humans. almost humans, That's but Umans. That's good. And, and Chris Fleming. Hi. Welcome Morning. to the show. First Morning. time here. Right? Yes, thanks for All having right. us. That's the first swinging. time in the Bronx, though. That's right. We're in the no. Bronx a lot. <laughs> we spend a lot of time in the Bronx. You're doing some wonderful things with reading. We uh, try. You work with the public we school do. system. We, Behind the Book is a literacy nonprofit, and we work in New York City public schools, mm -hmm. and our goal is to get kids to like to read. And we do that by doing curricula, although our programs are curriculum based, we try to bring in uh, the authors of the books that the kids read. So we work with mm -hmm. each individual teacher to create a program around a book and an author that meets the needs of the classrooms, the teachers, and the kids. And we try to bring authors that reflect the communities mm -hmm. and books that have issues that also reflect uh, the direct needs of the kids with whom we're yeah. working. How do, you, how do you choose the books? Uh, good question. Go ahead. Well, it, it depends on what the class is studying. Uh, we work in pre-K through 12th grade, so that's yeah. a range. Uh, the authors come into the classroom, so obviously it has to be someone who's somewhat local, although often you know, a lot of publishers are here, so yeah. authors yeah. will fly in. We work with the teachers, what the student interested, interested, what the student reading level is, and where we can build a program that's going to be interesting and engaging and keep the students reading the book, because that's the goal. Yeah, right. I love it. I, I've been to a couple of schools where you had to come in and read a book uh, to a class, and uh, I got ready to read. I, I think I was in a nursery school in New Jersey, uh, and I got ready to read this book, and the principal came and said, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Let him read to you. So a um, young man, I think, uh, I don't know if he was four or five years old, and he read to me, and I was like amazed. I said, wow, this school is, they're on to something. So reading is very important in our schools. Well, reading is one of the key issues that yeah. the schools are having, getting kids to read. And we think that if you like to read, it seems very logical that you'll read more and all of the things that you're learning in school will kick in. Mm -hmm. And you'll like to write. And Excuse you'll me. like to write yeah. because if you really want to know what's going to happen at the end of the book, you're going to push through and use all the skills that you learn yeah. in school. And also we found that writing is so connected to reading that we're bringing in the writers. We also, the kids all do their own written pieces. Mm -hmm. And about 20 of our 68 programs do books of the kids writing and their art. Oh, great. So this is, we do a lot of social justice programming. This year we're in 68 classrooms around the city. Mm -hmm. We're in four schools in the Bronx and we're doing about 13 programs. Each program has six to eight workshops in it and it includes reading, writing, uh, art. We have two teaching artists on staff. We do field trips, Can I interrupt? We, yeah. uh, the big part of our, our program is that we give the students the book prior to meeting the author. So mm -hmm. every student in the classroom that we're working on gets a copy of an author's book. Right. Then they, we work with the program with the teacher, how far along they're going to read, what, how we can help them scaffold the reading, what we can do for questions. Then the author comes in and the students meet the person that's written mm. the book that they're reading. Excellent. And that's a very, very we exciting, guys profound. In our schools. Right. And, <laughs> and we actually encourage the students, if they didn't like the ending, to, to Tell, tell, tell the author, yeah. say, yeah. Why, so did you, why, why did you have that ending? So it's a real dialogue, and because yeah. the author comes more than once, the students get to know, That's and it's in a classroom. Up. It's oh, not nice. an assembly, it's yes. in the classroom right. with right. the author, right. often in a seminar, a round table, a yeah. discussion. So this is a great example of one of the books we use a mm -hmm. lot uh, in our high school classes. Sophia Quintero, the author, lives in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. The book takes place in the Bronx. And do you want to tell a little bit about it? Sure, give us a Well, quick it's, um, I'm not going to give it too much away. It, it, the, the underlying question that we present with the students that they respond to writing is, is it ever okay to do a bad thing for a good reason? So mm -hmm. Ephraim's a young student in a high school in the Bronx, wants to go to college, doesn't have the funds, so he does something that's not quite legal to get that money. And oh. so a lot of things take place. There's, uh, we deal with the family issues, the social issues. But the underlying uh, dilemma is, how do you justify that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so then the students take from that writing, we then produce 
they bring art and they write their own stories, their own fiction. Got it, got it. And, uh, and we have them, the books are designed uh, and published professionally by pro bono book designers. Oh, they that. have all the same parts in the book that any book you'd buy in a store or take out of a library has. I like the kids that. write the title. Beside writing and doing the art for each of Here's their pieces, authors. We, uh, we have a class bio, we have an author bio, table of contents. I mean, the yeah. same thing as you'd buy in a, a store. Also, we give it to the school library and it gets an ISBN number so other kids can take the books out as well. There you go. So we, we try to produce published authors by the end of our programs. Tell me, how do you motivate and inspire a student who, mm, not into reading too much, but uh, how do you get them into it? Well, that's most of, most of the kids, not, I hate to say most, but I tend to say most of the kids with whom we work. And I think that book ownership is part of it. When they look at the book and they see it's about an issue that's important to them or something they may have been, have seen themselves, yeah. it might take place in the same place where they live. Things like that make it really important and make it pretty engaging for the kids. Yeah. They may say, oh, I don't read too well. And I don't but then they want to know, is yeah. Efren going to jail? Is Efren not going to so jail? So the book pulls them into it. Yeah. Yeah. And Makes them want to turn meet the page. The author. Yeah. And the author, in this case, Sophia, lives in the Bronx, speaks like they do, looks like they do, had grew up like they do. They mm -hmm. pretty much are really interested, boys and girls, to meet that author. A little author. bit of street lingo uh, in there and everything. Yeah. Whatever, however it goes, yeah. yeah. And Identification as we said, technique. And uh, well, perhaps. <laughs> it depends on the kids and the students yeah. and the author. So the authors are always uh, charismatic. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of it, um, that they really like the kids. They really want to know what the kids have to say. Yes. And we're trying to give the kids the tools to have their own voices, Excellent. which is part of the social justice piece. So many of our programs have become social justice because we've seen, or social justice related, because we've seen the need for kids to be able to develop and express themselves. Mm. It's the most important thing. Yeah. Once you can do that, the rest again follows. So a lot of our programs are how to take care of yourself in a situation. What's the best way to act yeah. through the books that they're reading? Do our public schools need more books? There's no or question our public we schools do. need yes. more books. Some of the book schools we work in don't have libraries. Many of them don't. Yes. So we provide also a lot of books for the library. Right. As many as we can, we try to get from publishers and publishers other organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, we so give there's room for library building in some of the schools that, uh, Absolutely. that you work with. For sure. They yeah. need librarians. They need libraries. They need the space. They need the books. They need to know how to use the library so the kids have to go to the library. I think that's, mm -hmm. I grew up going to the library, I think, once a week as a child. I think that's really important. I and still have my library card. Me too. <laughs> of course, of course. Tell us one thing that we need to know before we go. Volunteering in our classrooms. Yes. It's very, we use lots of volunteers. We use 15 at a time to help the kids with research and to help the kids with writing. And we need more volunteers in the Bronx. It's our most difficult, challenging place to get mm -hmm. volunteers. And people can volunteer through our website. Uh, it's very easy. You commit to 90 minutes, sometimes an hour, that's it, plus your transportation. And the program coordinator explains what you do. You don't need experience, but we need Bronx people in our classroom. Kids love it. Because no. if there's 33 kids in a classroom with one teacher, when they've got other adults in there that are listening to their story and helping with their writing, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. I <laughs> yep. love the work that you guys are doing. Thank you Keep very much. Great work Thanks. And, uh, it's great to meet you. Get to more of our schools. Bring yeah, more come, books hey, out. Yo, come on. Come with us. Yeah, yeah. we would love to. <laughs> volunteer. We'd love to have I, you. I would love to volunteer. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. Okay? Yeah, uh, give her a big round of applause. Joe Umans, executive director behind the book. Woo! Also founder. And Chris Fleming, program yes. coordinator behind the book. <laughs> Let's get behind them. Let's get behind right. the books. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Our pleasure. Hey, did you know this? Women in their lifetime, the average woman, will go through uh, a long period of time using lipstick. Let me see, I'll tell you. The, let's, you it's right like here, me. look. It says, did you know the average woman will consume over six pounds of lipstick in their lifetime? Good thing I'm not average. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing lipstick for you guys. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Give out, another right? big round of applause, everybody. No, it's fine. All right, stick around for a second. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with oh, more I open next. I